You're listening to Journey for Truth with internationally known medium, Tai Yi practitioner, and radio host, Tammy Urbanic. Hello and welcome to Journey for Truth on iHeartRadio and YouTube. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tammy Urbanic. Journey for Truth Radio is always on demand and with many new episodes. On my website, empowermentthroughhealing.org, you can find a life energy flow Tai treatment titled Repowering the Core. This is in two parts, so two separate treatments that are part of the one main treatment, Repowering the Core. And this treatment is for really for people who have lost their passion. They're tired spiritually. They're tired emotionally. They feel like they've put everything forward and they're just not getting something back and they're tired. And this is about repowering that, to bring that energy back to your core and to help you really refine your passion. My guest this week is Antonia Hall. She is the author of not just another sex book, The Ultimate Guide to Multi-Orgasmic Life. How do we achieve an orgasmic life? We're going to find out. We're going to talk about sex today. Antonia, welcome. Thank you so much, Tammy. What led you to begin this work in orgasmic living? I was finding how certain tools were incredibly transformative for my own life. And I've always had a passion for looking at how we can empower people, especially in ways that are being repressed, despite the fact that it's inherent to our human nature. Mm -hmm. So this led, uh, you know, it was kind of a natural flow to go into sexuality and how it's been liberated and tapped into to enrich not just our sex lives, but every area of our lives. Absolutely. Uh, You know, sex is a topic that a lot of people like to talk about. They like to listen about it. You know, a lot of people have great sex lives. Some people don't have any sex life and everything in between. So what does it mean to live an an orgasmic life or a multi-orgasmic life? To live a multi-orgasmic life means that you are tapped into your own inherent sexuality, you're bringing it through your body, you've learned how to have multiple orgasms and full body orgasms. And that energy is so juicy and creative that it it not only fuels you, but it fuels every area of your life. So when you talk about orgas- uh, orgasmic life and orgasms and multi-orgasms, are you speaking of the purely sexual orgasms or are you speaking more of, you know, you're living your life in such a way that you just, you feel this energy that's just kind of rolling up through your solar plex, through your chest? Right. So it, it is both the more orgasm with which most people are familiar and then the energy orgasm of bringing it through the circuitry of the body. And it's very healing, it, it helps charge you, and um, it, it's also an incredible source of transformation. So what might a person experience if they were to really start bringing this energy through into their life? Well, for men, it's this new experience, if you're used to equating orgasm and ejaculation as the same function, they're not, they're two different functions learning to differentiate the two, learning to bring that orgasm into your body and be able to keep going until you want to ejaculate or not ejaculate. And there's a lot of philosophy in the East that says that not ejaculating every time is actually much healthier for a man. Hmm. And yeah. Why is that? Because it's a life force essence. And once men ejaculate, they usually experience this decline in energy and they're they're zoned out. That's it. They came. That's it. So um, once you learn to to not ejaculate that out, but to bring it up into your body, you've now held on to this rich, potent energy. That's awesome. And you can still have the orgasm. And it, it, so it puts him in control. So for men, there's that distinction, and, and that's something that they could learn to do. And for women wow, we are just so ripe for pleasure. And learning how to move this energy through the body is like putting us on a charger. It helps to clear out any blocks whenever we have these energy blocks that, you know, something happens and we don't have the time to deal with it or we don't want to deal with it, we stuff it down. Mm -hmm. Eventually, moving through that is very cleansing and, and it's such a release and, and an orgasm is a release. 
So now you're releasing this negative blocked energy in this really incredible and fulfilling way. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, how do you blend sexuality with spirituality and science? Well, quantum physics mechanics is now showing what the ancients have been telling us for 5,000 plus years, that we are all just this energy form. And once we look at the body as an energy field instead of this physical body, you're able to start moving that energy and moving energy with your partner. So it's it can be this incredible thing to bring into the bedroom, this great new tool that you're bringing this potent energy through you and through your partner. And we are sexual, spiritual vessels. So moving through that energy actually can be an incredible source of transcendence. Now, what if two people are coming together and they are using sex in a different way than you're explaining, perhaps using sex to escape or they're using sex out of anger? Um, They're using sex to it's a one night stand. And I'm not saying any of that is I'm not judging it one way or the other. But what kind of an effect would that have versus the type that you're talking about? Well, the type that I'm talking about can happen in those situations, despite what underlying, you know, thing might be going on. Um, Transcendence can happen with one night stands. People have experienced that. Jenny Wade's work showed that beautifully. I don't recommend doing this deep, energetic work with someone that isn't someone that you know well especially for women, we're the chalice, we take on energy. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't know your partner or that energy that you're taking on, you can later have this experience of feeling wonky and feeling angry and feeling frustrated or, or whatever it may be because you've taken that energy on. And of course, men, men as well, we, you know, we're all energetic beings. So I, don't recommend it in that way, um, but I do offer a lot of self-love tools, mm-hmm. and I think that the more that you are taking care of yourself, mm-hmm. the more you're only going to want to have the best for yourself in partnered situations. Exactly. I completely agree. So when two people are having sex, it really is an exchange of energy, mm-hmm. and so if if... if two people are exchanging anger, I could see how that's simply going to intensify their own personal anger the next day, a few days later, a week later. Uh, Or if one person's angry and the other's not, then that other person could later become angry because you're exchanging something um, back and forth. So, you know, one night stand, as you were stating, might not have a completely negative impact. You could still have a pleasurable experience, but specifically if two people are angry or two people are depressed or they're full of fear and then they're going to that sexual activity, there could probably be some um, not so nice outcomes. That's true. That's true. How is, how is gratitude and forgiveness going to help someone achieve an orgasmic life? There are a lot of things that can get in the way of our having the deepest, most fulfilling sex life and also in every area of our lives. And gratitude is an incredible tool in transforming your the way that you see life. And the way that we see life and our perception is so crucial to how we experience our world and what we bring into our lives. And when we need to forgive someone and we're hanging on to something, again, that's part of loving yourself enough to not carry that because it's going to limit and restrict the partners, your friendships, your work relationships, you know, every area of your life in the way that you're viewing and, and relating life is a mirror and Mm -hmm. it's the, the inner creates the outer. So if you're holding on to anger and frustration and and stuff like that, then you're not going to have the best life that you want to lead. I completely agree that it, uh, first of all, having gratitude for me has been 
uh, very beneficial, always very helpful. You know, when you have gratitude and you're grateful for what you've created in your life, what you've attracted into your life that has helped you, then you attract more of that because gratitude feeds into more gratitude, the same as anger feeds into more anger and fear feeds into more fear. Yeah. Uh, and so I love what you just stated that um, having an orgasmic life includes forgiveness and gratitude and letting things go and move, healing and moving beyond painful emotions and painful experiences. Yeah, it's it's pretty transformative and amazing, right? And even when you start to get in that headspace where like, oh, but this is happening in this and you start to get worried or exactly. fearful. And then if you can just shift to gratitude, it shifts so quickly. You can't you can't be in that space of saying, well, I'm grateful that I have a car that runs well. I have a roof over my head, whatever you're grateful for and be in that fear place at the same time. I completely agree. Now, what is a full body orgasm? A full body orgasm, and I touched on it earlier for men, is when you start to bring that energy up into your body instead of expelling it outward. Okay. And women are the same way. And you can start to move that energy. You can even, with breath and some energy work and a little bit of muscle control, you can move that energy through your body and have orgasms hands off like it really it's pretty amazing our body is incredible but we're not often taught this i completely agree with that too many times we are taught to pay attention to very material things pay attention to our external environment instead of how we can feel better internally how we can feel better about ourselves you spoke about self-love earlier and also a very hot topic in in my work as well that that is really the core of finding balance and the core of living a very enjoyable life. And now, how does breath play a role in all of this? Uh, breath is amazing. So it's something that we kind of tend to take for granted because the body does it for us. Mm -hmm. But breath alone can relax you when you're totally stressed out. We all know about taking a few deep breaths to get centered again and you know release some frustration if something gets frustrating or angry we can also use short quick breaths to energize the body very quickly like if you get that three o'clock four o'clock lag hmm. then you can use quick short breaths in order to energize and stimulate the body really quickly so there's like the long slow ones that are calm you down and cool you down but you can also move energy with your breath and with sexuality. The more that you are expressing with breath and with sound, the more those orgasms expand and get really amazing and juicy and fulfilling. Now, very interesting. So what you're recommending, if I'm understanding correctly, is that during a sexual experience, people would practice a certain breath in order to enhance their experience. Yes, absolutely. And even if you don't know many breathing techniques, and I do detail quite a few in my book, but just getting more breath into your body, the more breath you're taking in, the more that you are feeling. And some people have learned to take short breaths and only breathe into their mm -hmm. chest right. in order to not feel as much. It's kind of a, a way to shut down so that you don't have to feel. Yes. So the more that you are opening and expanding that and bringing more breath into your life and the yogic expression, breath is life, speaks to this, the more that it, one, will help your cells at that deep cellular level and the more that it carries pleasure through your body. It's amazing. Can you give one example, one or two examples of a breath that you recommend to people during the sexual experience? So I would try sipping slowly, and you can do it through the mouth or uh, in through the mouth and out through the nose and kind of play with what works best for you. Hmm. But just sipping the energy up into your body 
is a very powerful practice to help move that energy and energy moves with intention. So if you are visualizing the energy moving up your spine and you never want to force energy to move, Mm -hmm. it's something you're inviting, Mm -hmm. um, then, and you're picturing it, then you'll start feeling how that can move. It's the body is wired for this. It wants to move through. Very, very interesting. And this is the first I've heard of it. So it really, intri- it really intrigues me. <laughs> uh, so I can, you know, think in my head, okay, I'm, I'm betting a listener is thinking, okay, do I start this before <laughs> the sexual activity? <laughs> do I start it during? You know, I, I know a lot of people get very mental about these types of things, and which is fine. And um, but, but that is a question that many people might be thinking of. When would you begin the breath process? That one that you just gave. I would do it when you start to already are already heated. Okay. But this is something that you should play with. So experiment on your own and start learning your own body. And by the way, because you touched on an important part, our, our mindset is so, so important. Mm-hmm. And our headspace gets in the way of our sexuality and expressing it far too often. But if you are breathing and making noise, it will automatically take you out of your headspace. So if you say, ah, that's going to take you with your breath and out of your head. So just making some noise alone will help move you back into your body and out of your headspace. Excellent information. Well, actually, you just answered my next question talking about state of mind and and how that plays a role. So you pretty much answered that. But uh, getting into our heads, getting too mental, too technical, really just kind of pulls us away from that feeling experience. Because what you're talking about is all about the feeling experience, not the thinking experience. Except there is more to it because there are a lot of stories that we carry in our head. And I actually have a whole section on mental mastery because it's so important. So if we were raised with body is shameful, sex is sinful, Mm -hmm. or any kind of messages like that. A lot of people have. And a lot of people have. And it's such a pity because it's, it's inherent to nature and we're all part of nature and all of nature is sexual. And that's that creative energy. So the more you can kind of let it move through you and be at peace with it, the more it's going to fuel everything in your life. And so dealing with those stories in our head, actually immensely helpful in getting past, getting out of your head space in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Because if those kind of messages are are pervasive, then you're not going to be able to relax and, and enjoy yourself. Absolutely. A a lot of people have been taught that sex is wrong, sex is bad, or um, your only job as a wife is to please your husband and therefore just follow his directions, so on and so forth. There are just so many ways to pollute the activity, uh, sexual activity. And I completely agree with you. If a person is really caught up in that belief, which that's exactly what it is, a belief, then it doesn't interfere with the feeling process. And that is a a really rough one that men are supposed to know how every female body works and whatever worked with the ex is going to work with the new girl, right? Probably not. And then we as women are taught to acquiesce. He's going to know everything. It's a lose-lose situation. But the more that you're in touch with your own body and ex- and exploring and experimenting with your own pleasure, the more you can express it to your partner. And the, and being able to, to say, oh, honey, I love it when you do this, that's going to help that person. You know, so that's your partner. So it, it, it's another really important one to get past. Well, I think you're leading into my next question of how do two partners excuse me, uh, reconnect on a daily basis because everyone seems to be so busy, especially people who are working 40 hours a week. If there are kids, there's pets, there's activities. How, right. how do two partners reconnect on a daily basis? So I also have a whole section in here on partnered play and how to reconnect with your partner and how to experiment together 
in new ways. Honestly, there are new things to try that would outlive us. So there's there's no reason for like rote, oh, this is what works for us. Plus the body is always changing. So what you like at a certain point might not feel as good at other times of the month or later. Mm -hmm. And so playing and experimenting together, it's fun. Why wouldn't you want to experiment and play together? So I give a lot of a little, you know, ways that people can, and they are, I know everybody's so busy. We we're supposed to have more time because of all the electronics and everything, but instead we are busier than ever. Mm -hmm. Nobody has any time. And um, so I wrote it, I wrote my book in a way that it's just a couple little pages and then an exercise and a couple little pages and an exercise. So it's super easy to implement into your busy lives. Excellent. Now, what advice could you offer to people who have a fear of intimacy? Really, it goes back to self-love for me, again, that when you are taking care of yourself and giving yourself what you're needing and desiring, which we all deserve and all should be doing anyway, then it's going to ripple over into this, the true sense, because we all deserve deeply healthy, fulfilling relationships in our lives. And you'll know that more when you're taking care of yourself. It's a consistent reminder, giving yourself what you would be seeking from somebody else. And when you're not seeking, when you're already fulfilled, it starts to, people are attracted to that. You mm -hmm. have that inner glow. You're fulfilled already. You're not out there, feed me, feed me. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so... So you, you actually come from a different space and it helps to attract and get over that fear of, mm -hmm. of intimacy. Because now, you're already mm -hmm. intimate with yourself. Absolutely. And I think that's what people are, are really afraid of. Mm -hmm. It is. I do agree with that, that I think that people who have a fear of intimacy have a tendency to, well, they're, they're closed off for a reason. There's been injuries. There has right. been... Um, emotional injuries that, that there are many out there. I won't describe them all, but, and then you put up this wall in order right. to self-protect, but actually it kind right. of keeps people out and it keeps you from uh, feeling a deep connection with another person, as you were talking about earlier, and intimacy is a part of that. Now, um, some people might be thinking, but I have a hard time achieving an orgasm. So what about people who, you know, they, they're thinking, okay, I'm going to try the breath. I'm going to try this, these different suggestions you've made in the show so far. Is there other advice you could offer someone who's just feeling like just not happening? Um, unless there's a, an issue, like some kind of depression, antidepressants, Okay. Or something like that that can really mess with the hormones and make it much more challenging to experience that pleasure. There really, it's it comes back to experimenting, playing, get getting through the messages, um, and that breath and energy work is incredibly powerful. And you can start doing some of the practices in the book playing with that and tapping into that, you'll start moving that energy through. It, it's something that the body was wired for. What about someone who has a fear of expressing their sexuality? Perhaps they are um, homosexual, bisexual. Perhaps they were simply taught that you're not allowed to express sexuality, that sexuality is a bad thing in general, regardless of sexual orientation, but any of that, is there something that you could offer for someone who just, they have that fear of expressing sexuality? It's an inherent part of who we are. And really, I think that it's just so important to make peace with what what the messages that are running through your head about that are and questioning that for yourself. 
um, because you're going to limit and restrict so much of your life. And the book is written in a way that can be used by any gender orientation. Um, so there's none of that will get in the way with the techniques. Um, and you just, you deserve a really rich, fulfilling life. So any, anybody or any messages that are telling you differently, I would just ask you to please question that mm -hmm. within yourself and ask who says that? And Absolutely. is that really what I believe? Because you do deserve the best in life and you do deserve to really tap into what is your inherent nature. Wonderful advice. Now, where can people find your book and your information? So um, my book, The Ultimate Guide to a Multi-Orgasmic Life, can be found on Amazon and through Ingram. You can go to my website, AntoniaHall.com, and you can click on the links to buy it from there. Um, yeah. Excellent, excellent. And uh, before I let you go, Antonia, I want to remind the listeners that you'll want to go to jonahlifeinstitute.com to check out a new seminar that's coming out in May, Denver, Colorado, towards the end of May. Read all about Hoska Harrison, Jonah, sign up for the free newsletter and get much more information, jonahlifeinstitute.com. Thank you, Antonia, for being my guest today. Thank you so much, Tammy. Total pleasure. And thank you listeners for joining me here as well on Journey for Truth on iHeartRadio and YouTube. Until next time, have a fantastic week.